As we approach our next 60 years in Youth of the Mission, with the things that God has given us, like the Christian Magna Carta, we have that banner over us, which is to disciple nations. First of all, what is a nation? In the Bible, the word ethne is used, which really is speaking of people groups, not nation states or empires. So it's not so much a legal entity. Ethne means people of common habit. So when we think of Japan, you would have three categories. The Ainu in the north in Hokkaido, the general Japanese culture on the main islands, and then the people of Okinawa in the south. And so the heart of God is filled with compassion and love. The mind of God remembers and understands their story. As we go as missionaries, we enter into a relationship with a people group. Where do we begin? We may have assets. We may have education. We may have something to bring. It may be the political uh, tradition from your country, like English common law or American constitutionalism. And those may be a benefit. They certainly have been to Japan to some degree. But we don't start there. We start, first of all, by acknowledging that the nations don't deserve to be healed any more than you or I deserve to be saved in our personal salvation. But we have engaged in our endeavor to heal the heart of God. Those are His children. He loves them and He knows them. So we begin not by an anxious striving to understand, but we begin in the place of worship. We look up, we listen to God, we receive His affections for that people group. We don't know how to pray as we ought, the Bible says. But when we receive His heart, we begin to receive His mind. Now, some of that will be revelatory. It'll be prophetic. It will be not based on any information we have. But the protocol of relationship with God and man is humility. And humility means to listen, at least in one of its applications. And so one of the things that we are to do is understand that people groups have a corporate personality. They have the memory of wounds. There are places in which there is shame. There's an overlay of the demonic that perhaps has entered and oppressed those wounds. There is perhaps a blindness concerning the gospel that's come because of those events. When we think, for instance, of Japan, we can think of a time where Christians were slaughtered. But we can also relate that to the fact that Japan was afraid of outside influences because it had the memory of being invaded from the mainland of Asia. God understands the peoples of the world. And God, in the place of prayer, will give us prophetic insight as to how to approach the nations that we are called to. There's another aspect to this. I have found as a white male Anglo-Saxon Protestant that there are many nations, when I approach them, my identity reminds them of some kind of wounding or offense. My people group has had power and privilege and affluence and technological advance for over 400 years. I'm not talking about the United States, I'm talking about a deeper entity, which is the, uh, the cultures of the English speaking world. I'm a New Zealand citizen and an American citizen. And in that context, often I approach a people group through my shame rather than my glory. What does that mean? To all of us, there is attached glory and shame. Think of the high priest going into the Holy of Holies once a year on the Day of Atonement. We are called a royal priesthood, 1 Peter chapter 2. So in the New Covenant, we are also responsible for making atonement for the land, for in some way engaging with Jesus as the great high priest in that activity of revealing his presence, breaking the strongholds, forbidding and permitting the demonic, releasing the angelic, what God spoke to the young uh, Ezekiel in Ezekiel 37, he speaks to young Weimers. What do you see? He asks. And then we see damage. We see wounds. 
but then we are called to invite the presence of God into the earth. In Psalms it says, the heavens are the Lord's, but he's given the earth to mankind. You might think, well, God is sovereign. Why does he need us to pray? There was a time a few years ago when I gave one of my cars to one of my sons who was returning as a missionary. Now, for a few weeks, I still had the title deed and I had the keys. But when I said, I give you this car, the protocol changed. It was now his. He had jurisdiction over it. And so when Psalm says the heavens are the Lord's, but he's given the earth to mankind, we see that the demonic authority here is stolen human authority. This is our inheritance. So we get right with God, we identify with the sins of the land. We don't take a position of accusation, God have mercy on them, but we take a position of identification, God have mercy on us. And so we grieve over the painful things in the story. If our identity reminds someone of their wounds, for instance, I'm a male, and there's probably not a woman watching this that hasn't been hurt by somebody like me, Instead of repudiating and distancing ourselves from that association, we can grieve and say, those things should never have happened to you, my sister. Will you please forgive us? We have misrepresented the nature and the character and personality of God. There are 14 broad categories of human conflict in the earth, and all of them are demonically infected, like management and labor. When we think of Malachi 4, we think of the foundational one, generation to generation. These are things in which the living God can reveal himself. If you love one another, Jesus said, they will know that the Father sent me. So we become an interceding community, we become a prophetic community, and we live a simple life in affection and respect for one another. And that is also a prophetic act. That is also an intercessory act that gives us great authority in the heavenly realm. So for 60 years, perhaps 220 passports, several million Weimarmers have lived in some kind of a community and common action. And that has been a prophetic act. And so as we go into the next 60 years, let us not forget that prayer changes things. It's not by might not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. The smallest prayer releases enormous authority, particularly if it comes out of unity, with humility, in a context in which we understand what God is saying.